Hi, I'm Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot, and I'm very pleased to be here with Ashiana Dean. Uh, and basically, I think I'm going to let you do your own introduction as to who you are and some of your background. You know, it's interesting to hear you talk about yourself just briefly, because we're going to be talking about the material most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, I would say that you are the author of the Voyager books. Part of the appeal is for people to kind of get your personality. Right. And if, if you get a question that you're not quite prepared for, your personality will start to show. Well, it's and, showing. And what do you do with very, that? I don't know how to describe myself. No, you can describe and, and, me. and it's very delightful, so um, I, I don't think you have anything to worry about. So, but at any rate, you want to say you're, you've come here to teach about ascension? Yes. Would that be accurate? Yes. At this time accurate. on the planet? Yes. <laughs> and, and I'm not uh, a speaker, one in the Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order, and that was a commission that was given to me. And the other two speakers, there are three of us, are, are present in the room with us. Okay. You're an American citizen yes. in this life? Yes. Okay. And where did you grow up? In what state? Would, well, would I was that born in okay? Pennsylvania, and okay. I was raised in Pennsylvania and um, New York, and then moved to New Jersey, and then moved to Florida, and then to England, and then to Arizona, and then to Colorado, and then back to Florida. Okay, so you've been around. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Actually following spiritual guidance, we were asked to move. Once it was past the, you know, the childhood and adolescent times, the, the moves were following what I was uh, advised to do by the Guardian Alliance. Okay, wonderful. And you are in touch with what you call the Guardian Alliance. That's what they call themselves. Okay. Yes. And uh, do you consider yourself uh, a channeler? Because I, I am aware of what it is you do, but I'm going to ask you questions that are may seem wrong. Okay. And, Feel free. And so at, at that point you can correct me, and it's totally fine. It's not channeling. In fact, we teach against channeling because it's dangerous. It is a process of electronic data streaming that it's quite sophisticated, but it doesn't work like channeling. Channeling involves literally another um, entity coming in and sharing a body with you, and that is not permitted in our teachings because it can actually damage your DNA. This is an electronic data streaming called chelantic transmission, and it is literally electronic data streaming, but interdimensionally, as opposed to simply you know, on the horizontal like we do it here. And that is the way that the Guardian Alliance communicates with me and has since childhood, but they have also, I, in, in my uh, younger years, I had both negative abductions with negative groups of visitors, and it was the Guardian Alliance that actually rescued me from those situations. And I, I learned a lot about why I had the experiences. It had to do with the contract I came in with. That it, it takes most people quite a few years to wake up and realize what they came in to do, what they birthed in to do. And uh, that was why I had the issues with the um, with Zetas and things like that when I was in my younger years. By the time I was 12, the Guardians had begun teaching me for the commission that I later learned what it was for Speaker 1 for the Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order. And uh, it's once that became clear, the experiences weren't frightening before they were frightening, the you know abduction experiences. And uh, the ones with the Guardians weren't, though. They were very different. They didn't involve little greys, and they didn't involve uh, spaceships. They involve literal teleportation through Merkaba vehicle and those kind of things. So it's been a colorful way of, of to get to the point where I am here teaching the material that I'm teaching. It's been very interesting and colorful. In the first few years, um, I was required to speak about that a lot. That's why I don't like to speak about myself anymore. I'm honestly bored with the subject sure. of me, right? Because the first few years that we went public with the books and everything, it was all about me and my story, and I'm tired of my story. It's out there, go read it if you want to, but you know, this is the interesting stuff, the information we're teaching, so. I totally honor the fact that you've told your story many times, and, and it is out there, and so I do encourage people to, uh, to go out and investigate uh, her background, to watch other audio and video presentations she's done because they're excellent and I have watched a few of them and I'd love to watch more and she's an excellent speaker and and so I do encourage you to investigate if you're watching this um, so what I'd like to do from here is really get into what the agenda is of what we call uh, the service to self or negative oriented ETs mm -hmm. visitors mm -hmm. um, what have you, and, and then if you could talk about that, and then if you could also talk about 
what the positive side uh, service to others is doing, what their objective is in being in contact with us here, mm -hmm. and so on. So that's where we want to go. Okay. Do we have to take the short road, or can we take the more interesting road? Let's take the interesting road. Isn't okay. It? Because the interesting road, by the time we get to answering that question, will make a lot more sense. And the interesting road does have to do with some of the other questions. When I, had, you know, we'd asked you that, you know, just give us a few questions or something that you're planning to ask, you listed a couple things like, you know, essential mechanics, um, you know, uh, the, the the human race and where it's going and this kind of thing. Um, there is a way to explain this. That we've been working for 10 years. Every workshop, this is our 84th coming up, and every one is new information. It's the next level of information. So we have been, the Guardian Alliance has been providing us with progressively growing teaching since the Voyager's books were out. Very, very technical teachings on ascension, on stargates, on understanding planetary stargates, galactic stargates, universal stargates, how they all work, what the process of ascension is, all of this thing. In understanding some of those things, like what is a stargate anyway? What is ascension anyway, right? In understanding some of those, it brings us to the point of where we actually are now on the planet, which explains what is going on with the visitors. It explains what their agenda is, why they're doing what they're doing, and what we can do about it, because there is a negative and positive side to this. But the, the picture is much bigger than most people realize. Even people in the UFO movement and people in the New Age movement, they have pieces of the story. When I found out what this story was as it progressed, because I had my cellular memory turned on for a while, I had incarnational memory since I was very small, so it was not new to me. But when, when the Guardians revealed progressively the this, this scope of this drama, I was horrified at first, honestly. I was terrified and um, moved past that to the point of realizing, wow. I mean, the, <laughs> it is so tiny, the little dramas that we're worrying about here. This is much, much bigger. And the reason the information is important now, I and mean, for 10 years we hardly did any media at all. We didn't do interviews. We had a couple little interviews, and we turned down a lot of radio interviews and that kind of thing, because we wanted to kind of just fly under the radar and do our things. We do our workshops. People come to our workshops. We didn't heavily advertise them. The reason why we're coming out and speaking now is because the Guardian Alliance has asked us to. They are on now what is called official disclosure protocol because of things that are occurring. 2012 is very important, and so are the periods right after it. There, this, <laughs> to to uh, coin a phrase from Anderson Cooper's show, uh, planet in peril, uh, yes, <laughs> to put it mildly. So if I can explain some of the things that are taking place now in a certain, it, it's a sequence, and you're, you're free to interrupt at any point, Okay. right? But it will help get a, a little bit to the more full understanding of what are the visitors up to, what is their agenda, and where are we at with that situation. It will also include the information you said, you know, what about the stargates and what are the status of those. It, w it will show where that is. Right. And it's like the quickest sequence you can do, right? This has been, you know, 10 years worth of work. Now we can look back and see what this is all about and see where it's going. So if you don't mind, I will, you know, put a couple charts up. The first thing no I would problem. like to do, if we're going to talk about what is happening on the planet now, it does involve ascension and ascension does involve stargates, but what is ascension anyway? There's a quick way to explain this, and it has to do with graphs. And I use graphs because, seriously, pictures paint a thousand words. If it hadn't been, and all of these graphs are literally transmitted from the Guardian Alliance, and I, I take them down by hand, and because I don't have computer art skills, so they've all been done in, like, you know, black and white form, and then to, thanks to a team of volunteers, they put a lot of work into putting them into computer, you know, finishing, so they're decent, most of them are. You can tell the ones that are still the ones I did on a photocopier, you know, with a photocopier. But this one, this particular diagram, and also I will qualify these by saying, you're going to see diagrams that are one out of, there might have been 50 diagrams in that series explaining every piece of how that worked, what it is, the structure of it, and all of this. I'm just going to show certain diagrams that will show structure, because structure is important. Science here is getting into um, quantum physics and all of those things, and oh, maybe there's dark matter and all these wonderful maybes. Uh, there is a whole order of these things. Yes, there's dark matter. Yes, quantum physics are real, but they have no idea the structures that are involved. 
This is not a haphazard cosmos or universe. Some of these things, if you're going to understand what ascension is, you need to understand what context is happening in. And that's why the Guardians gave us the context in the first place. In the early days, they taught us about 15 dimensional physics. And that's not meaning there's only 15 dimensions. Dimensions run in sets of 15. And there are many, many, many different sets of 15 dimensional matrices that have a particular order that form un galaxies, universes, cosmoses, plural. It is a multi-cosmos, not just a multiverse. Now, when you think of ascension and stargates that you ascend through, it implies there is an order of stargates within these greater structures. So I will show you this diagram Let first. me ask you where the diagrams came from. In other words, do they, are you getting, you say you're getting this sort of a data stream mm -hmm. electronically, mm -hmm. and when you say that, it's, I am assuming that you're uh, visualizing, maybe you're getting a visualization. No, I just see them. Okay. Yeah. And then are you, tr how do you transfer them onto the paper? How do you, you know, you draw them, <laughs> really? Okay. I'm known as the whiteout queen. <laughs> Because a lot of times they'll come down, like one diagram like this, that's all like, you know, looks like a single thing. There'll Very be like six different images on it wow. and like 20 different layers. Okay. And I call it a pullback process where the whole big thing comes down in one data stream that it might take me like six hours just focus completely on one, getting it all down. And that's even without the words and labels and arrows and stuff. That's just okay. getting the shapes and structure. Then we'll pull them out. Right, where I'll make photocopies and white out that part, and then you got that one, white out this part, then you have that one, and you might have a, like a series of ten of them out of the one that came in. So it's almost like a, what do they call those files um, where they condense everything? Zip file, yeah. yeah. So it comes in like a zip <laughs> okay. file, and when it opens, it, it, uh, there's a lot of heat involved. Actually, you can mm -hmm. feel the the DNA activation. It comes through the chakras activate, and there's like this heat field around me when it's coming through. Or sometimes, depending on the line. Because there, there's different lines, different ones, uh, uh, different levels of the Guardian Alliance communicate, you know, from different places. And some of the lines come in cold, like you know, shiver, or some of them come in hot. Okay. So some of them carry the images, and that's where the images are coming from. And at this point, there are thousands of them. There are thousands of intricate diagrams that Fabulous. you know come okay. in this yeah, way. That's, that's great. All right. This one, for instance, this is part of a huge series. Now. And this is a, a very simple one, as you'll see in some later ones that grows. If we can think of this, I, I wanted to use this as a very simple way to explain what ascension is. Ascension is about evolution. It's actually about re-evolution. The Guardians refer to it as uh, re-evolutionary determinism. Yes, there is a predetermined framework of creation within which creation you know, occurs. But you have free will within that framework. And you start out as part of the whole. They refer to it as the God Source Consciousness Field. Mm -hmm. And from that place, you can enter into material experience that is all taking place within that God Source Consciousness Field. There is no place outside of God. All of this takes place within the body of the consciousness of God Source. They consider the structures in which and through which matter materializes and forms and, and identities individuate, they consider that part of the manifest body of God's source. And they're talking about the cosmos as being the manifest body. And there is a field of just pure cognition that is beyond that. It is eternal. It is always aware. Time as we know it in linear form is just not a reality there, but it's understood as an experiential quality within the framework of materialization. So in that context of understanding a little bit about how we look at God and the concept of God, yes, there is one. It's not some big father dude on a, you know, with a big white beard that's going to send you to hell if you're bad. Um, right? There is structure involved in this. Now, we've got, we went through what is called Partikai creation, which takes it from the first unit of consciousness in the consciousness field of God that did something and went under certain changes. From those changes, that shape grew and literally created the spherical wheels within wheels or spheres within spheres that is the hidden structure behind all cosmic order and even galactic order, planetary order, and your own body's order and atom's order. So this, if you think of it as just an example of a cosmos, mm -hmm. all right, you have a center point, right, and you have a sphere. Where you see circles, they're actually spheres mm -hmm. of energy. All right, you have, a, you have one sphere, two sphere, and a third one in the center, the smaller ones, and then lots of these little ones in the center. What this is showing us is consciousness comes out from the center point into this domain or this sphere. It's called the, the, um, the Hara body. And first, it individuates into the two 
larger spheres, and they individuate into sets. And this all happens at the same time, right? It expands outward. These are called, when it expands outward, it's called ikashi, expansion cycles, where consciousness is coming out from the God source consciousness field into the smaller form or structure of materialization and expands out through these cycles simultaneously, one on each side. This particular line is referred to as a vector, time vector, time space vector. One end of it is referred to as an event horizon. So one time vector has two event horizons, right? Now, here you have a core, here you have an inner, here you have a middle, and here you have an outer domain on each side. Reality fields take place within all of those. So it's not just that there are numerous reality fields. You have ones in the outer bands, you have ones in the middle, inner, and core bands. The process of coming into existence is expanding out through experiential cycles within the Akashi expansion cycle till you get to this point. When you get to this point, now you'll see in, in this next graph, these are actually time cycles with names. They're called Iyugas. And when you get to this, which is called the Kali Yuga, mm -hmm. there are several options. And one of the options, which is the natural evolutionary process, which is ascension, that is the natural process by which eternal life beings, and most everybody started as eternal life beings, are, would naturally undergo. After you expand out, get through the incarnational cycles here, and you would go through what is called a Christ star turnaround, all right? where you enter these little cycles behind. They're called the Adashi return cycles, where they're the going back into source cycles. This is the process when you expand out. At this point, if you were able to make this Christ star turnaround, your atoms will actually transfigure into eternal life light atoms. And at that point, whatever form you hold there becomes an eternal form that you can materialize and dematerialize at will. You, you become what's called an Adashi adept. And some people call them ascended masters, but that term is terribly abused on this planet, so the guardians do not like to use it. Um, but the Adashi adepts are the ones who have made it through that change, and they are now what are called Mashayahana individuals, which means they, have, they are eternal life and they can manifest, demanifest at will. When they go back through the cycles, go back in the center, and they can actually rebirth as collectives, like as sons and those kind of things. It's an amazing process where a being that, say, is a small, like a human being, can actually evolve, re-evolve, to go back into the state of even being like a sun or a star. And it is an eternal process. There is no death involved in that process. That is the natural process for life forms. So when we're talking about ascension, it is about doing the natural re-evolutionary process. But that is not happening on this planet. When we get to this point of the Kali Yuga expansion, there are other things that can ha happen too. There are certain qualities about the science of ascension that are very, very much about physics. All right? And there are consequences in physics. If things are not working well on a planet, it affects the body of the people who live on it and the animals who live on it and the plants who live on it. And if certain things are not working well in the body, the DNA does not function properly, the body will not produce the chemicals and a particular one called celestiline that is required in order to allow the atoms to merge with their antiparticles without annihilating. That allows particle and antiparticle to come together, they shift angular rotation of particle spin, and you can literally turn into a radiation wave. And that that's what it means actually to go into full Merkaba and be able to go through gates. That is the process by which you go through stargates. So if we talk about ascension, it is the natural process of being able to expand out. We were out in the Kali Yuga cycles, finally we're out here. Now we have choices. We can ascend, or if we get stuck here, there's another path that we can take. It's called the um, Kali, Kali Rama path. It is the path of step back. You can go back here to the stage before and then have to rebirth out again into the cycles in the outer domain and do it's almost like a restart. You do it over again. So hopefully you, you know, fulfill all your ascension codes. It's what it's about. It's about activating your atom to the point where they can fully transfigure. And if you can do it in a cycle again, then you can ascend again. There's another path that can occur here. There are basically three paths. The other one's called the path of Kalidima. That is the path of fall. That is where you get stuck here. You can't step back and you can't go forward because of the choices you are making in your life that are affecting directly what your DNA can do and what consciousness you're aligning yourself with affects the frequency that your body is able to carry. And if you get stuck here, you will reincarnate in this cycle until the quantum you came in with burns out. And then you will do what is called a space dust return where ashes to ashes, dust to dust, you will come to a point where you don't have enough energy to reincarnate into another body, into another time cycle. And you will eventually simply just go back. And eventually, everybody goes back. 
But if you go back in ascension, you go back whole. If you go back and step back, you can come back out and go back whole. But if you do the fall path, you do go back eventually as space dust, where your body dies and your consciousness can no longer hold together, and it fragments and just becomes part of the local environment. But the local environment at times goes through natural cycles that have to do with stargate cycles and ascension cycles, where all these little uh, time tracks pull in together and then come back out again. At that point, anything that gets stuck out here gets drawn back into the center. So this is why God's source doesn't look at it as losing anyone in the fall path. It's the experience of you losing your connection with the universe that it's really about. So in we, to, to get to understanding stargates and everything, I wanted to explain on this simple diagram about the cycles that we are in. Because right now we are in that Kali Yuga cycle. And those three choices are facing us very much now. And more than they might usually, because this planet is in the middle of a drama that people here have forgotten, but they knew during the Atlantean periods, they knew 10,000 years ago what was happening here. And we have forgotten that knowledge. So anyway, let's go to the next diagram. If I spend this long on every one, we're going to be here for six years. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, that that's actually very helpful, and I think that that was very clear. So, <coughs> sorry about the cough. Thank you. That's okay. No problem. Okay. This next one is just a little bit um, yeah, similar to that one. It's showing the structure of that one a little more clearly. The reason I'm showing you this is just for down the bottom here. I'm not going to read them all or anything, but the detail level that we're giving. Each of these different states, I talk, we've talked about the, the core and the... Uh, the inner, the middle, and the outer domains of reality, within which reality takes place, right? They each have a different state of matter, a different type of matter, a different density level of matter, and different states of consciousness that go with them. So I just wanted to point that out. So when we see this diagram, we're seeing the three, uh, the Kalihara, it's called the Kalihara system, and we have the Hara bodies, and the, you know, the, the time, space-time structures within the higher body. So these are large energy structures that you don't see. And you don't even see these. You don't see, you know, you're not walking around in your field counting your little balls, right? <laughs> but they're there. This structure, the cosmos is created with this structure, but it's much more complex. But when you see it, it implies um, structure, but also time and evolution. And that is a good way to show the ascension process, where it is, you expand out, you go through experiences in the time, levels of the time matrix, and then come back in through the Adashi return cycles. So the word Adashi, for instance, is something you know that is uh, special to us because we are following the path of Adashi, the path of Christ our return. When I use the word Christ our, by the way, or any of the words like Christ, or anything like that, we spell it with a K. It's either K-R-I-S-T, sometimes we use shorthand, or K-R-Y-S-T. There's a reason for that. It's not maybe because we're basing everything on the Bible or anything like that, nothing against the Bible. But it's spelled with a K because that's how it originally was, and what it refers to are, it's actually, there's seven um, syllables to it. We often will just shorten it to five. It's uh, the first seven audible sound tones of creation, and they are, uh, ka ra ya sa ta ha la and we all often just shorten it to you know, ka, ka ya ra sa ta christ right so that's where we use the word christ it has to do with the sound tones the vibrations the first audible sound tones when we get into first particle creation before all these structures occur in the cosmos there are certain things that happen on a very 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 nano micro level that uh the first what would be audible sounds or audible vibrations. And that is why we use that word, Christ. So that's where it's coming from. It's not saying, yeah, we're Christian, that's a, you know, which means we're not this and we're not that and we're not the other thing. It's something that belongs to everyone you know, in every language. So anyway, that's just another version of showing the same structure. This is part of a much larger structure and has to do with stargates. So we'll go, because what the, what the drama that's happening on the planet now with the visitors and all of that has to do with stargates. It has to do with ascension, but it has to do with stargates too, and who's fighting over them. <laughs> so the next diagram, this is called the Illumeridana spirit body. And the reason I'm gonna show you the spirit body structure, this is a diagram that has many purposes, but if you remember that last diagram, this one is a bit more detailed it is still showing structure. This is a simplified, and each one of these pieces and flows and all of the different elements of this have been analyzed. There's like 100 graphs to this sequence. What it comes with is this structure that is referred to as the Illumeridana spirit body, which is different than your light body structure, different than your atomic body. So yeah, it's part of that structure. The cosmos has this too. When you see these little petal things, these are actually flows of energy. Okay, now think cosmic 
right? Inside of this, you have those that the, uh, the Hara ball structures with the time cycles moving in and out of this. But if you notice here, there are 12 points on this. There are 12 petals. Each one of those would have a line running down it that comes out the other side, right? Each would be a vector line. So you're not just dealing with one vector where you have two event horizons. You're dealing with sets of um, sets of six vectors that form 12 event horizons. And there's more than that, too, but that's the ones you can see in this diagram. The spirit body structure is built on, uh, on, on this particular structure. And these flows here, you have some of the outer flows that are called the lotus flows, those lighter ones in the pink. And then these little things that you can see part of, they actually go all the way down to the core, but then there's another layer of them here and another here. These are called uh, the core flows, or the Navejo flows. The Navejo word has to do with a particular uh, part of the creation cycle that is the first, where, where the particai units, which are the first units of consciousness that materialize, are actually born. It's a word that has to do with the na Navejo cycles. So these are called the Navejo uh, core flows. This has to do with stargates.